Libya is one of the most complicated stories on earth. Gaddafi was in power since 1969. It was more than four decades, 42 years. The Arabs bring up rising in 2011. Four times Libya. They're saying that since 2011, this country has gone into complete chaos. We saved a lot of Libyan lives. I want now to Libya. Now we want to Libya. Libya, a country torn apart by civil war for the past decade. But how is the situation on the ground now, today? Gaining access into Libya is extremely difficult and complicated. No tourists are allowed. Only business visas are issued. After two years of trying to get into Libya, I was finally able to obtain a business visa for this extremely restricted and controlled country. So, here we go. <laughs> It's only gonna get better and better. Comme l'exigent les Libyens eux-mêmes. Now, could we have done more after uh, the uh, Gaddafi regime uh, was ended? Well, that's always, uh, uh, you know, second guessing, and I'm sure that there's more we could have done. But let's look at what we did do. A complex and highly dangerous situation. The international effort that we have led in Libya. We finally have hope that our nightmare of 40 years will soon be over. Coming to you from Istanbul International Airport, I'm about to get on a flight with the Libyan Wings airline and fly to Tripoli, the capital of Libya. It's been quite stressful to uh, even get approval from the supervisor at the check-in desk to be let in, even though I already have a visa, a business visa. That's how you get into the country. It's a long process, I'll explain it to you later. Now we've got to go get on a plane, fly to Libya, a country with a very dark recent past. I've been told by the guy I'm meeting on the ground there in Tripoli that it's pretty much guaranteed to be interrogated. So uh, nerves are a bit high at the moment. Let's go through security and uh, fly to Libya. Here we are in the capital of Libya. Here we are in Tripoli, it's insane. And crazy to be here, I've wanted to come here for two years. Finally here. I've got, we're going out right now to explore around the city a bit. Let me just ex quickly explain to you. You can see I filmed there on my phone because I'm here technically on business and I don't want to draw attention to myself by using this camera. Flying into the airport was pretty insane because it, that's actually not the main airport that we flew into. The old airport was bombed and so this is a, a new temporary airport but even the one we flew into there was old planes around, half blown up planes, bullet holes in the walls of the buildings. It's pretty intense. Apparently it's, it's a lot more stable now but yeah, it's, it's, it's quite intense to be here. It's hard to feel. It feels, it feels pretty okay so far, but you never know. So I have to be really careful with the camera. For obvious reasons, they're very, you know, on the edge about any kind of filming or, you know, it's just quite a, a tense situation. So anyway, I've got my local guy waiting on me, so I better go. So let's go explore Tripoli, Libya. Crazy. Thank you. Okay, so we've driven around uh, Tripoli for a bit and we've come down to the beautiful Mediterranean coast here with uh, Abu Bakr. Hi! He's gonna be my main man in Libya. Yeah. Looking after me, right? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> cool. we'll make sure to have a great time. Cool. And uh, check out the sunset. First impressions of Tripoli. Seems much more calm than I expected. You know, obviously after years and years of media and seeing, you know, horrifying things that obviously did happen and, and you know, a, a failed state for, for many years. You know, your mind always defaults to the worst. But so far, 
it seems pretty stable. Uh, obviously I only just got here a couple of hours ago but people seem friendly. There is military presence and police presence in the street and you know I'm sure it's, it's quite difficult with the camera and everything but we'll see how we go. It's just really beautiful to be here by the sunset. You know these are the scenes that you don't really think of when you think of Libya. There are lots of local people fishing, we drove past lots of families playing on the beach. Something that definitely sticks out about Tripoli is uh, it's, it's very mixed. You have these nice looking places and then you have these places that have obviously seen war, bullet holes, and then you go around the corner you see a nice new coffee shop. It's quite the, quite the contrast in places. So this is the castle, it's now the National Museum. Wow. It's absolutely a beautiful museum but it's been closed since 2011. <laughs> So it's the following day, here we are on the roof of the hotel, beautiful view of the Mediterranean and the rest of the city here. We're about to drive, you know, all the way through the desert, it's going to be, you know, five, six hours plus through the desert. Going to another town further out, we're going to see what we can find on the way, see if we can come across some people to meet. Let's get on the road and uh, explore more of Libya. We are going to be coming back to Tripoli, but we're going to continue uh, into a different part of the country today. So should be pretty interesting. So far it's nothing like what I expected. So we've driven through the Sahara Desert for like two hours. It's quite hot here. We've come to this historical site here. They used to store olive oil and grain in these vaults. This was like a bank. Uh, anyway, so we've arrived in this local town here. Military presence on the way was a lot less than I had expected considering the, the recent past here. Because foreigners are so rare here in Libya, a whole force of the local police have come out to meet us. And so uh, I've asked them if I can ask them some questions and they're happy to be on film. So it's a good opportunity to talk to some local officials. Okay, so we're here with uh, Abu Bakr, who's showing me around in Libya, and we're here with uh, Officer Bakr. Do you like being an officer here? Do you like your job? Do you like your job here? Do you like your job here? Yes, 100%. Great. Yeah, 100%. And so, where I come from, uh, the image of Libya is, uh, people say it's dangerous and it's not safe. Do you think that I'm safe being here? And do you feel safe living here? هذا هذا بالنسبه للسؤال هذا هو يجاوب عليه لان هو يعرف هل هو في مكان امن ولا مش في مكان امن احنا تو ما نقدرش انا نقول لك انت في مكان امن هو في طبعا بالنسبه لي تو كل شيء يشوف فيه يقدر يجاوب عليه هو هي سيد دي دي انسر تو ذات از ريلي يو كان سي فور يور سيلف وات دو يو ثينك دو يو فيل سيف سينس يو ارايفد ان هير اور نوت سو ذير از يور انسر ان 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 دو يو فيل سيف وانت شخصيا تشعر بامان امان وتمام والحمد لله الحمد لله اتس جريت اي فيل فيري سيف يا ان ذا ويسترن وورلد ذات يو ليبيا ان ا سيرتن واي وات وود يو تيل ذيم رسالتي ليهم ان شاء الله باذن الله تكون الامور الاحسن هو حتى تو نوعا ما ماهيش اللي نقول لك ان نضمن لك ان امان 100% ولكن هي سيد ذا مسج از ليبيا از جيتنج ماتش باتر اند اتس امبروفينج ايفري داي and you've seen Nick now coming all the way from Tripoli was no like such thing as checkpoints or uh, mm. militias or any of that right. a normal ordinary street uh -huh. so, so it's only going to get better and better okay. that's his message to people right. in the west shukran 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 i bark a lot okay shukran Okay, we have been driving through the Sahara for 
couple more hours and we've come up to this mountain top we're driving over this mountain actually check out the view not sure why but there's just destroyed cars down here and then we're on this winding road up through the the desert here in Libya it's quite the scene so as many of you will know Libya is a very oil rich country that's where the majority of its money comes from petrol here is extremely cheap we're about to go and get some I'm gonna film the process it's gonna be quite interesting I think it's like three cents a liter you just get it off these guys on the side of the road and I think because we're going so far through the desert today it's gonna be about seven hours driving through the desert today or more so we have to load up extra fuel and possibly put it in the back of the car interesting thing about about Libya it's actually a huge country you know one of the top 20 biggest countries in the world but it's got a very small population in terms of how big it is I think there's only around 6 million people live here and 2 million of those live in Tripoli where we've come from so you've got so much vast desert out here with you know nobody in sight because it's so sparsely populated there's not going to be many opportunities for petrol when we're driving through the desert and you do not want to run out of petrol in the middle of the Sahara So we've come to the petrol station but apparently these are always empty and so we've met up with a guy and he's got two tanks of gas on his back seats of his car. So Abu Bakr, can you just explain to us what's going on here roughly because it's quite a okay. unique situation, right? Yeah, so, so what's happening here in Libya, this is half a litre of water, is about 10 cent. Uh, our petrol in, in, in Libya is 3 cent per litre that's across all of Libya. So that's very cheap, almost free, especially comparing to the countries around us like Tunisia and Sub-Saharan Africa. That gives us a problem, basically, up here in the mountains. We get a shortage because as you can see, Nick, petrol station is there, but it's closed. Right. And the reason for that, all the uh, fuel gets smuggled to other countries like Tunisia, Sub-Saharan Africa. Because it's so cheap. Because it's so cheap and it's sold 100 times the price of what you get it here locally across the border. Right. You know, so then we have to buy it effectively from the black market uh -huh. to get it done. Where does this fuel come from? Tripoli? Or? No, it could. Or, it, or when, when this opens, which it does, he would go there and grab as much as he can ah. and have it saved somewhere and then resell it effectively. Mm -hmm. So he's a small fish, right. you know. But we're talking about uh, people who have uh, 100,000 litres uh, containers and even more so. And do you think this will be enough to get us across the Sahara without getting stranded in the desert? <laughs> I think this would work out fine. Right. I had a problem calculating with mileage and kilometers, but right. this should take us all the way to Damis now. And so how much does this cost roughly for these two big so, tanks here? So, how much does this cost roughly for these two big tanks here? Not the more, said I'm not going to sell for you. I don't know. He said he will tell me in a minute. So the price is yet to be decided, or I think so. Right, it's being negotiated between him and and him. <laughs> okay, two dollars. Two dollars for, for twenty liters. For twenty liters, yeah. Well, if I was in Tripoli, I would get it for uh, three dinar, just about uh, seventy cent per piece. Okay. Yeah, something like that. So it's yeah. more than double. More than double. Yeah. yeah. But it's still, you know. It's in the middle of the desert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's very cheap i mean he's providing a service definitely and is it quite common for people to be doing these kind of rogue setups yeah yeah in fact if you go to zawara which is in the border you'll find people like him will fill will, will they have special tanks designed in their in their cars uh -huh. which will take 100 liter and literally they will drive to tunisia sell it to the local people in there and then drive back to zawara fill up and keep doing that it's a good business it's a business yes yeah you could end up with a Maybe a hundred dollar a day or something like that. It's really quite surreal to think that this costs, you know, a few dollars to fill up a massive Land Cruiser's petrol tank. It's insane. Are these the spare one we're taking? Yeah, we're going to take it with us. Is that approved by the safety council? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It doesn't exist in Libya. So 
so here we are in the desert we've pulled over and driving for I don't know probably six hours so far still got more to go uh, we're meeting a guy here though and we're gonna do some I think four-wheel driving or something so that should be fun uh, the interesting thing about you know the the roadsides here on the side of the desert you'll just come across these random buildings like there's one in the distance there it's just coated with bullet holes and smashed windows from bullet holes and you know since the revolution there's been a lot of uh, outbreak of war and things in di many different parts of Libya it's obviously very complex but you know as you've seen it's it's reasonably stable now we're in the parts of the country that I've been to but other parts of the country are still you know a bit iffy but yeah there's so many of these just uh, random buildings in the middle of nowhere that have just you know coated in bullet holes some of them are okay some of them not so much but yeah Whew. It is hot. After the four-wheel driving, we're actually going to the border of Tunisia and Algeria. It's like a triangle of borders there. But yeah, right now, if you were to get a map out and point to the middle of nowhere, that's where we would be. <laughs> so we've driven out through the desert and we've come to this spring. And it's 35 meters deep, it's just naturally here. There's locals here, swimming, jumping in. It's like a little kind of holiday spot, I guess, I don't know. Definitely looks inviting in this weather. It's like, I don't know, 30, 40 degrees. So we're here with Mosa and he's uh, driven us out into the middle of the desert here. We walk the tourists when they used to come, take them in groups as well, as a drivers in there. Before 2011. Uh, okay, and then if some people lost, lost their camels or something, then he would be the guy to go and find them. Ah, okay, ask them what happened if they make their way to Algeria because it's close right so they will just send them back to us so. okay so before 2011 when the before the revolution he was able to work in tourism but now he has to find other jobs to kind of fulfill his his needs yeah. okay. so he's opened like a garage I like mechanics. Mechanics, yeah, for repairing uh -huh. car. He tried one in Tripoli, said he didn't like it. Right. Come back, open here. And he's uh, raising uh, camels and things like that. Is it a hard life out here or is it comfortable? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. There is no time to sleep. Right. <laughs> so just constantly working. Constantly working, yeah, mm. to make a living. Yeah. 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 It's a tourism now is, is picking up internal tourism. Okay. So Libyans have started coming in. Right. So now they're replacing the uh, instead of Italians Foreigns. and Europeans, the foreigners, he's dealing with that. So he's doing a bit of that. Apart from economic problems, do you feel safe here? No, <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> Yeah. No, there isn't anything. It feels very safe in here. It's very safe. From 2013, he said things have been so so good in here, in this area anyway. Great. So they had a, a bit after the revolution. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very much different from the coastal area. Right. So we've just driven up the sand dunes here. You can see them in the background here. You can see over here in the distance there's some cars moving on the desert, it's quite far. But we just met those guys, packing serious heat. They've got automatic weapons and lots of ammunition in the back of their trucks. We met them and shook their hands, obviously I didn't film it, but he's got to be reminded where we are, you know, in Libya. So many hours driving through the desert, we've arrived in Gdams, which is actually right next to the border of Algeria, Tunisia. Please keep in mind during this Libya series that I'm doing the best I can under the control to see interesting things and meet people, but it is quite controlled of what you are and what you aren't allowed to do. We are constantly monitored by the police. They're actually phoning and seeing where we are at certain points in the day, so we have to be quite careful and even talking to somebody who maybe would be assumed not the best person to be talking to, their opinion being shared, 
is uh, quite a challenge. Mainly what the, the police want you to see is historical sites. I'm trying to kind of, you know, get off that path and, and, and meet people and see the modern day kind of culture and how life is in today. But uh, that is proving quite difficult, but I'm going to keep pushing and we're going to see what we can do um, with the resources we have. Abu Bakr is a great uh, guide, he's really trying to help me out here, but you know, we, we can only do what we can. You know, even just being in this town, we've been told we can't talk to anybody on the streets. And we've arrived in this huge hotel in the middle of the desert. I'll show it to you in another upcoming video, but it's just this huge grand hotel. Like I just got lost coming from the dining room back to the room and there's nobody here. We're the only ones here. Huge dining room, all empty seats. Like we're talking hundreds of rooms and they're all empty from what we've seen. I haven't seen another guest yet. Please bear with me. I'm trying to show you the best of what I can with the resources I have. Like I say, in Libya, keep in mind that Libya is, you know, a very closed country. You're not allowed to come here for tourism. Let's continue this business trip and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah. This, this, this country is proving to be really interesting for many different reasons. Driving across the desert today was exhausting. <laughs> Nine hours in the desert in the hot sun, it was like 30, 40 degrees. Um, but you know, that's why we travel. Okay, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from Libya.